Hello, it's Mr. Omara here again. I'm here to talk to you about my second favourite type of sentence in the world, the compound sentence. Now, just to quickly recap, we know about a simple sentence. We have a subject, this, and we have a predicate, is a simple sentence. Subject, predicate, simple sentence. Complex sentence. We have a subject, this, we have a predicate, is a complex sentence, and we have a dependent clause, and always will be. Dependent clause cannot stand alone. Independent clause can. Today we have the compound sentence. The compound sentence is different. It's basically like two simple sentences glued together. In fact, it is two simple sentences glued together. We can spot it because it has more than one subject. It has more than one predicate, and these are properly joined together. And I'll show you what I mean. So, where are we? Just clicking around here trying to find the next thing. Indiana slept while Emmylou ate both dinners. So Indiana's one sub subject, and what she did was she slept. But Emmy Lou is actually a different subject because she ate both dinners. If they were doing the same thing, they'd be only one subject, even though they're a couple of dogs. But because they're doing separate things, it's actually two sentences. Indiana slept is an independent clause, and Emmy Lou ate both dinners. And it's joined together with a conjunction. In this case, I keep getting that coming up, don't I? In, the case, in this case, the conjunction is while, which means it happened at the same time. Let's look at another one. The stranger watched as the sheriff faced the outlaw. The stranger watched, that's one sentence, subject, predicate, as is our conjunction, that's our proper joining, and the sheriff faced the outlaw. This is how we join two sentences together. Now this is much more power than, powerful than you might imagine. This is how we show the relationship between ideas and at the level that you're at, sort of year 10, 11, 12, you should be writing a lot of compound sentences. They're good for showing the relationship between two ideas. So let's have another look at another one. Indiana and Emmylou slept while the rain fell on the roof. Now in this one, the first subject is Indiana and Emmy Lou. They're not two subjects because they only did one thing. They slept. While is our conjunction. And the next subject is the rain because it fell on the roof. Dog sleeping, rain falling on the roof. It's basically two sentences. And what's joining it together is the while. Now you'll notice that here we've got a comma. Some people will tell you that you shouldn't put a comma before a conjunction, but I can tell you that that's absolute nonsense. If you need it to make it clear that you're slightly changing tack, or that you're basically going from one idea to another related idea, I think a comma can be really useful. In a shorter sentence, you might not need it, but you can certainly put it in there. This is your choice as a writer. It is perfectly valid to put that comma in there, so that you just go, OK, Indiana and Emmylou slept while the rain fell on the roof. The conjunctions, which is my next point, the conjunction really matters when you're doing a compound sentence. The conjunction basically gives you the meaning for the sentence, or at least a big chunk of it. And I'll give you an example of that before I wrap up. Indiana barked because Emmy Lou was wet. It's saying sentence A was caused by sentence B. A because B. So that's what because does. Whereas if we use um, before, then we're talking about time. So one was talking about cause and effect, but if I use before, Indiana barked before Emmy Lou was wet. It doesn't say what caused what, but it gives us some temporal information about time. Next, we have Indiana barked, but Emmy Lou was wet. Now, but is one of those fantastic multi-purpose conjunctions, and but what but mostly does is it refocuses your attention. You know, Indiana barked, but the important thing, which is what Bart always says, here's the important thing, Emmy Lou was wet. So that's kind of for refocusing. So just to quickly recap, a compound sentence has more than one subject. It has more than one predicate. So it's basically two sentences and they are properly joined. They can be joined by a conjunction and also by a semicolon, but I'll talk to you about that another day. So that's the end. I hope that's been useful.